Good morning. I got the sun over there, but it's still not that bright, is it? I love old golf books, especially the ones talking about people like Walter Hagen, Bobby Jones, Gene Sarazen, that sort of people. But there was one guy who didn't publish books until just before he died, and that was Harvey Pennick. And he published his diaries, those diaries where he scribbled little notes about the lessons he gave. Now one of those little paragraphs is, if you play badly once, forget it. And you should, you should forget it. If you badly play badly twice, review your fundamentals. And if you play badly a third time, well, get down there and go see your pro. Now I am long past that third step of seeing my pro. I should have been seeing my pro at the end of July because it was, it was starting to get a bit loose and a bit sloppy. Today I'll review my fundamentals. I'm starting on the ninth tee. Uh, I'm going to use this hole as a, just as a little warm-up and I'll see you on the 10th in a moment. Well, I suppose the first place to start is my grip. Now, if you've got a glove that looks like this, it's got a big wear mark on the heel, then like me, you're letting out shaft. Well, what happens when you let out shaft, when you grip too far up and even off the handle? is at the top of the backswing, the club's very heavy, so it moves around in your grip and it wears your glove. Now my second issue is my right hand. You know you're supposed to grip with these two fingers. Well, I kind of like let go a bit at the top of the backswing and then I get a, a pinch grip. So I wear my glove because I'm letting out shaft and I wear my grip because I'm pinching and the whole club it's moving around in my hands. How the hell am I supposed to get the ball out there on the short grass when the only thing that's touching the golf club and controlling the face of the golf club is crap? Well, sorry for the long introduction, but I don't know how I tell you what I'm doing or why I'm doing without it, really. Well, bloody hell. Where's that been? There's no captions on this, no yardages, no clubs, no score. That's not particularly important when you're practicing on the course. But that wedge did come out rather low, which has me worried a little bit. So for this couple of holes, <laughs> nice bird, I'm trying to get down the shaft. What a stupid bloody game. An eight iron. And again, this seems to have come out rather low, but it is right down the banner. Well, the next issue is posture. I'm about five, 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 six something like that. So I tend to try and stand tall. But of course that ruins your setup for hitting the golf ball. And as I've been taught, I've got to stick my bum out and bend from the waist. So that improves my posture. But I've got a rounded back. You know, Tom was trying to get me to straighten my back. But I got sat behind, sat in a uh, office chair at the end of 1989 and I've been there ever since. And uh, as much as heavy lifting isn't good for your back, being sat down is also not good for your back. <sighs> First time out with a driver because there's a bit of wind in my face, so I don't quite know how this is going to go. But let's see if I can get into that posture where I'm sticking my bum out. Now, one thing you will have seen on videos is where I'm reaching for the ball. If I can get into the correct posture, then I can get these hands closer to being under my chin. The driver never quite goes under the chin, does it? But it's better than that. Posture is an issue for me. It's something I do get wrong. I do get slouched over the driver. I do get slouched over the putter. I've always got to try and remember to try and stand a bit taller. 
and I don't think the camera likes this low sunshine. But I think at my age it's always going to be a bit of a compromise. Quite simply, my body will not do what I want it to do. And I assume that's going to get worse as I get older. Look at this for, for a putt. Turn a borrow on the 12th green. I think if I wasn't spending my evenings editing and working on creating my new channel, then perhaps I'd have time to do a bit of yoga. Or something similar. Or just some stretching exercises. Just turning and what have you. Horrible flag position this. This will land on a downslope and run away. Yeah. Should have got it on the green. Stayed out there. Well, the next bit I'm trying to get in is improving my aim. We all know how to aim, but sometimes we just don't quite achieve it. And that's rather a nasty shot. And this is rather a good one. You haven't seen me hit too many from up here, but I do occasionally. One of my uh, big issues is the takeaway. This isn't something new. I got video from 2011, a teaching video, and I was doing exactly the same thing then. That is quite simply, when I take the club away, I bow this wrist, and I put the club head behind me, and then it goes up and it's across the line. Now one thing I've noticed, that this is connected to the grip. So one thing I have noticed going round by getting my left hand grip down the shaft and then gripping properly with these two fingers is it's tightening up the top of the swing. So the top of the swing is getting better. All right, the score's not getting better, but the top of the swing is getting better. And I'm also wondering if this poor grip is what makes me do this. Now you don't need me to tell you that when you're playing golf swing, your golf gets worse. I mean, look how long it took me to start the swing. There was too many thoughts going on in the brain. And I've committed the cardinal sin of going right. So all I can do is move this forward. So I'm not too worried about the score when I'm doing... Um, little exercises on the course. Oh. Yep. That shows what happens when the flag's in. Well, the last thing I want to mention, but not quite the last thing, ball position. You know, I've been sat there watching TV and a pro's come off the course on TV. He's had a bad round. He's been interviewed and asked about it and he says, I think my ball position's creeping forward. I'm going to the range. Now what does it do if your ball position creeps forward? If your ball position creeps forward, your shoulders open. The other thing it does is it loads weight onto this lead leg. When you really want to be back here, don't you? To exaggerate. So when the ball position creeps forward, you get a bit this way, then you get the reverse pivot. Obviously I'm making exaggerated movements here to make my point. So ball position's another thing. I think mine's more or less where it ought to be, but I really need to get a set of eyes on it. And if you think you've got some serious issues, then you need to get some eyes on it too. Yeah, so when your head is full of things that you are attempting to do, the chances of striking the ball well is rather low. So I'm not bothered about the score on this nine holes, but for those who are, I was 
five, five over? Or was it four over? I can't remember. Anyway, I blew virtually all my handicap in nine holes. So if your game is a little off and you're not very happy, why don't you and a friend get together, go out and play nine holes and remind each other of the fundamentals. Grip, posture, aim, take away. The things you need to play decent golf. Cheerio!